Hi friends, I'm really excited to make this video for you today because we're going to be talking all about my all-time favorite cut flower, the lily. I'm going to go over the proper stage of harvest, how to condition and store them in a cooler if necessary, the importance of removing the pollen anthers, and also my favorite varieties for cutting. So let's get started. So let's start at the beginning with cutting. It's best to cut our lilies in colored bud stage when we can see what color the lily is going to be, but before it has really started to open at all. And this is really helpful because then we don't have to worry about damage from weather or insects that might want to eat our lilies. I always want to use clean, sharp snips when I cut any flower, and I wanna cut in the early morning or like right now in the late evening. Now, lilies are perennial flowers and they will come back as long as you leave enough foliage and stem on the plant to regenerate the bulb for next year. So I want to always leave at least a minimum of a third of the plant in the garden. But this lily here, Corvara, is basically the same height as me. It's five and a half feet tall. I don't need a third of this plant. I only need about maybe an 18 inch stem. So that's all I'm going to cut. So I'll cut the plant. I'll go ahead and strip any foliage that's going to fall below the water line. And then I'm just going to place this cut lily into a bucket of fresh, clean water. Here I have a plastic bucket, plastic buckets. Oh, I just broke my bucket. <laughs> plastic buckets are always best. You can get these buckets for free usually. I get them at Aldi's, but you might wanna check a grocery store or a Walmart. They will often give you their floral buckets for free. But just continue to cut anything that is in colored bud stage. If you cut it too early where you can't tell what the color is going to be, that flower will most likely fail to open or it might even be deformed. So you really want to wait until you see the full color that that lily is going to be. So we've got our lilies in the buckets. Now I'll meet you inside. So now that we have all our lilies cut in colored bud stage, we wanna bring them inside our home to a cool location to condition for a few hours prior to arranging with them. And conditioning is just a fancy term for allowing a cut flower to sit in their original bucket of water for a few hours so they can really get a nice, long, deep drink before we start taking them out of the water and arranging with them. And you can expect a lily picked in colored bud stage that's set in a room temperature location to open within 24 hours or less. As with all cut flowers, if you place a cut flower into warm water and or a warm environment, it will hasten the opening process versus if you place a cut flower into a cool water and a cold environment, it will lengthen the opening process. Now, once our lilies do open, and like I said, it's really only a matter of a day from going to colored bud stage to at least having one lily open on the stem, it is vital that we remove the pollen anthers from the lily. This will not only extend the lily's vase life, but as the days progress, this pollen on the anthers will shed. It will fall onto the petals, it will fall onto neighboring fabrics, and it will stain them. Not only that, lily pollen is highly toxic to cats, so I like to remove it as soon as possible. So every single time I have a lily opening inside my home and I'm able to see the pollen anthers, I take a piece of tissue and I go ahead and just grab the pollen anthers and I'm just going to pull straight out. I also like to hold the lily back here where the bloom meets the stem, just for a little bit of added security. Sometimes, not often, but sometimes the head will pop off and we don't want that. And then just pull the pollen anthers right off. This really preserves the look of the lily because you're keeping the stigma, but it gets rid of this pollen, which a number of bad things can happen if we keep the pollen on the lily. So let's continue on in the process and talk about how to extend the vase life of our cut lilies 
after they've opened. Now, believe it or not, I caught all of these rose lilies around this time yesterday in bud form, and look at them. They are all open and beautiful now. At least one is open on each stem. And so what I wanna do to get the longest vase life possible from my lilies is every, I would say two to three days, change the water, give them a fresh cut, and I like to cut all cut flowers at a 45 degree angle. This increases the surface area at the base of the stem and allows for more water uptake. If you cut a lily or any cut flower straight and then you stick it into a straight vessel, once again, if that stem sits at the bottom of the vessel, you can have clogging, which is what we never want with a cut flower. So always an angular cut. I do like to use floral preservative with lilies. It helps extend their vase life. It also helps maintain the color and the vibrancy in the petals themselves. And then I just make sure and keep them in a place that's cool and out of direct sunlight. And I can expect a vase life of up to two weeks from these beautiful blooms. Now let's talk about storing lilies in a cooler or like what I use, a temperature controlled fridge as a floral cooler. The number one thing is that we wanna set our cooler to 35 to 38 degrees Fahrenheit. But the number one thing we want to do, especially if we're cutting lilies on really hot days, it's almost seven o'clock right now, the sun is setting, but it's still, I checked my phone, it's 95 degrees Fahrenheit right now. So even though I cut in the late afternoon, it's still 95 degrees Fahrenheit out here. I don't want to take these lilies and put them directly into my floral cooler. Instead, I want to cool them down gradually. This is because if I was to put them directly into my cooler, what is most likely going to happen is that the buds are going to have cold damage, which looks kind of like bruising to the buds themselves. And that's something that we can't recover from. So if you have a large floral cooler, you kind of leave the door open for about 15 minutes so that the temperature swing isn't so extreme. What I like to do is just take them inside for a few hours where it's about 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And then after about an hour or two, then transfer them to my floral cooler, which like I said, is just an old temperature controlled fridge. Now, in terms of having them in the cooler, only seven to 10 days, any longer than that, and you're gonna have yellowing of the leaves. And we always want to transport our lilies to our florist, our customer in water. So now let's talk about choosing the right lily class for cutting. So there are lots of different varieties of lilies that we can choose from. I'm only really going to focus on the ones that I feel are the best for cutting and the most profitable in terms of selling. So let's start with the Asiatic. Now it's late July here in my zone 6B garden. So the Asiatic lilies have already come and gone. But the great thing about an Asiatic lily is that it faces upward and it has no fragrance. And you know, lily fragrance can be pretty polarizing. You either love it or you hate it. So when you're just getting started to be on the safe side, I would say go ahead and invest in Asiatic lilies if you're selling to a broad audience. Better to not have any scent at all than to have really only strongly scented lilies and to have 50% of your customers not care for lily fragrance. So I always invest in a lot of Asiatic lilies. Now let's talk about double Asiatics and double oriental lilies. So this is a double oriental lily called Rose Lily Ramona. And double lilies are wonderful because they don't have pollen. They have extra rows of petals. So it really lends itself to a richer and I think a classier appearance. Now your double Asiatics have no fragrance. A double Oriental still does have a fragrance similar to an Oriental Lily, but not quite as strong. But certainly this amount of rose lilies, one, two, this is six stems. You will definitely smell this when you walk into the house. But I really love both of the doubles. More than anything, I just love that you don't have to worry about the pollen. That is just a wonderful thing to have in a lily.
Now next up we have oriental lilies and I think when most people think of lilies they're thinking of the oriental lilies because they have such a powerful strong fragrance that's hard to forget. Now this is Casablanca lily, a beautiful pure white lily. Also a popular oriental lily down below us is stargazer. I would also recommend OT lilies and LA lilies. I grow and sell both of those at this point in the season. I am completely sold out of all those lilies, but I can overlay some photos and videos from my flower stand. So an OT lily is a cross between O, oriental, and T, trumpet lilies. So you're getting both those characteristics, oriental and trumpet, in one plant. So often those lilies are bigger, showier, and they do have fragrance. Now an LA lily is a cross between Longiflorum and Asiatic, and I believe we harvested some of those together. An example would be Royal Sunset. So you have a lot of beautiful colors when it comes to LA lilies and little to no fragrance depending on the exact cultivar. Both of those are great choices and really popular in the cut floral market currently as we speak. Now we also have trumpet, longiflorum, martagon species, and so many other wonderful lilies to choose from. But the ones I mentioned here are the ones that I just couldn't live without in terms of cutting. <laughs> and my husband certainly agrees with me. But when it comes to things like species, martagon, trumpet lilies, I really feel like those are best used on their own because of either the way that they just naturally lay on the plant, whether they face downward, then they're quite big, or a martagon lily takes two years to bloom and it can be quite expensive. So these are the ones that I just couldn't live without. I sure hope this video was helpful and I hope to see you sometime soon. Bye.